Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Wednesday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. We can get into all kinds of stuff. Sam Presti's exit interview was yesterday. Why do people get so riled up about what he says or doesn't say? He's not going to tell you what the plans are for the summer. Okay, that's what we're going to do. It's not going to happen. Our priorities are Paul George, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant. He's not going to tell you that. No, he's not going to tell you. And and what's funny about it is everybody knows he's not. It's he's like going to tell you. It's day one. But, but, it, but every single time it gets done and everybody gets all up in arms because he's not telling them. Well, he's never going to. You know, everyone wants to read into what he says about Giddy. Oh, <laughs> Giddy's not leaving. He did not say. It, it, there's no more useless exercise in sports media than trying to glean something out of what Sam Presti says. He talked for two and a half hours and didn't say a damn thing His other exit than. interviews are legendarily long. Yeah. <laughs> Ex- the only thing he did say that I think you can actually listen to, of course, here we are picking it out, but he literally admitted. The Gordon Hayward thing didn't work how he thought it was going to. It's okay. Good for him. He he admitted that. that. Yeah. He admitted that. I mean, he's learning. I thought it was worth a shot, but so now after hearing what you heard or didn't hear yesterday, and this is this is just you, not not from anything he said necessarily, but do you believe something major will happen as far as the roster goes? Say between now. And when we're sitting here a year from now, will 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 a major roster overhaul happen? Some sort of move happen, and if so, when will that happen? Uh, on the college sports scene, Greg Sankey at the SEC meetings. I thought he was really cryptic in his comments as well. In what the future is, I, I mean, I know we all want to talk about and race forward to what this paying of the players is and how it all works. I mean, we're so far away. There's so many more questions than there are answers about how this is all going to work and how it's all going to set up, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we really don't know. But it's fun to talk about. One thing he did mention was there was discussion from a conference level about eight or nine conference games. Which one of those would you prefer and why? Um, we, we're obviously going to have new games on schedules for both OU and OSU in, inside the conference. Which one of those are you looking forward to the most for both schools? Okay. And then just as a whole, like what's a Big 12 game that you're like, man, this is cool that this one's happening. Or an SEC game, man, this is cool that this one's happening. Obviously, that means either Oklahoma or Texas on the SEC side. There's a lot of other options on the other side. Um, And then right off the top, T-Wolves, stay alive. They finally made the plays down the stretch. Here's a name that hasn't been brought up much around these parts, but it last night being in the outlier in the series so far, but let's just pretend like Carl Anthony Towns was available. Would you take him here? Would you take Carl Anthony Towns here if he became available this summer? And then, you know, I saw some stuff this morning about Anthony Edwards in the pregame. I can't remember who he's talking to. The name just slipped right about. He was calling him Lou. Pre-game. Talking about how, don't let us win this one. You know what it reminded me of? The 30 for 30 on the Red Sox coming back from 3-0 oh, down. Yeah. And Kevin Millar going all around, the, all around Fenway Park before game four. Telling all of his teammates, don't let us get this one. Don't let us get this one. Because if we get this one, then we got Pedro, then we got Schilling, then it's game seven and anything can happen. I mean, just over, and that's what Anthony Edwards reminded me of last night. Just don't, whatever they do, they better bury us right now. How much of that do you think is possible? 
can they force? A, can they even force a game seven? They had the they had the deal on there last night of, of uh, teams in the NBA playoffs are one hundred and fifty five and zero when leading three to nothing. Wow. Only four forced a game seven. Can they do it? What what percentage chance do you give Minnesota of even being able to get that far? And then, of course, what percent do you give them to win the series, even though they just won one game? Then last night in the NHL, people. The, the, the worst part about the, the Wolves winning last night is one thing in my mind. The NHL doesn't now have center stage yeah. until a week from Thursday. The Rangers-Panthers now tied 2-2. Three of those four games, they went to overtime. And the cool part of overtime, we saw it last night. And I'll tell you why it's the coolest part. NHL overtime in the playoffs is the coolest thing in sports, in my opinion. And, of course, tonight, game four up in Edmonton between Dallas and the Oilers. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. We can talk about all of those things, any of those things. There's something else that's under my skin a little bit, but I'm going to save till tomorrow. And I know it's going to be under your skin, too, because you even mentioned it sort of yesterday. I read an article from the Austin American Statesman this morning talking about how unfair it is that the, that the Women's College it World Austin, Series. Of course it did. It, women's College World Series is played in Oklahoma City. I love it. And I've got one thing to ask all these Texas Longhorn riders, coaches, and players. I've got one thing to ask them. We can start with that. I, I'm riled up this morning. 225-9698 <laughs> is the phone or the text line. That is 225 225- 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. Any of those things can be talked about. Whatever else is on your mind, feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, stay in touch with the show a couple of ways. Log on to kadsam.com or download the app. The app is free. It's got everything. It's got radio. It's got the Penny News. Brand new edition of the Penny News comes out tonight at midnight. Or Oh, oh this is Wednesday. Never mind. It came yeah, out last night it, at yeah, midnight. I, yeah. Thepennynews.com. You can check it out there. Of course, we'll have the uh, print copy Tonight, in some locations, by tomorrow, you can pick up your free copy of the Penny News. Then, of course, Big Elk and Paragon TV, both on the air during the high school sports season. We'll be there before you know it with football. Can't, it'll just happen. Like, boom, it'll be here. And, of course, the podcast is available. How are you, Jared? I'm good. How are you doing? Okay, so I read this article <clears throat> from the Austin American States. You're a bigger man than me. I wouldn't even read it. Well, it was in the Oklahoman <laughs> I, I, on newsok.com, so I read it there. But it's coming from the coming from the Austin American Statesman, and the question is: Should the Women's College World Series rotate away from Oklahoma? Mike White says yes, but it won't. There's a contract through like 2035 or 2036, 2035 between uh, the NCAA and not only not only the Oklahoma City but USA Softball as well. Basically, it's saying Mike White, same guy who just suggested Patty Gasso was doing something shady with her recruiting yeah and, and flipped off fans at one time that's him that guy yeah seventh making his seventh trip to oklahoma city for the college world yeah, series class act well, it, well here's the thing you can have that opinion all you want to but my problem with it is this you know what's never brought up in this entire i don't know let's say it's 25 paragraph article you know what's never brought up in this where it should go where it could no, go. no, no. There, there, he's got, of where he's got some go. options. Now, okay. it's obviously not nearly the facility as what his, you know, Oklahoma City has. But there, there's something that it's a glaring omission when this conversation is brought up. What's that? Oklahoma State is in Oklahoma too. Yeah. They, he didn't bring them up. They're never brought up. Yeah. Anytime this is talked about, they're never brought up. So it doesn't have a damn thing to do about where it's at. It has to do with OU's kicking their butt. That's all it is. Because if it was such a huge advantage, OSU would be winning it too. But they're not. Yep. It, is it an advantage? Sure. But you can't talk about what a great advantage it is for Oklahoma and not mention the fact that, well, Oklahoma State's, what, 50 more miles away? One of them's 30 and one of them's 80 yeah. or whatever it yeah, is. yeah. And here's another thing, Mike White, and anybody else that's talked about this. Why wasn't it such a big advantage from 2001 to like 2011 or 12 when Oklahoma was 3 and 10 
in that span in the Women's College World Series. Where was the advantage then? It has a lot more to do with Oklahoma being awesome at softball than it does playing in Oklahoma City. Is it some? Is it an advantage? Sure. There's no doubt about it. And you bring this up every time, and Dakota just did it again. Why isn't it such an advantage for Nebraska and Creighton in, men, in, in, in college baseball? The advantage is being awesome. That's the biggest advantage Oklahoma has had. Do you think basketball programs are doing backflips of joy when they see that, oh, the Final Four is going to be in Houston this year? Do you think the Houston Cougars are thinking, it's ours to win now because it's in our backyard? Not unless doesn't, they're good. Doesn't happen like that. Doesn't happen with the baseball, and and it's you're right. It's just OU is really really good. It just so happens the World Series is in the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, it, it and it just so happens that the the most world class facility for softball is in Oklahoma City, and Oklahoma City has put up the money, put their money where their mouth is to support this thing and give basically USA Softball or the NCAA anything they possibly want when it comes to stadium improvements. That thing holds 13,000 people. It's an impressive venue if you've never been there. It's by far the only one that can do it. So what were the other what were the uh, There was a couple options. brought up. It like, went, basically, the question was, are the facilities at Devon Park better than others in the country? In a word, yes. And then there was, you know, different – you know, I've heard him bring up different places. Uh, there was one, you know, it, it went to Georgia in 1996 as a test run for the Olympics. Hmm. And then there was, it was in Omaha at one point, but it's been in Oklahoma trying City for to, so long. Trying to mirror what the baseball was, mm -hmm. was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah, from 2001 it's to, through 2011, Oklahoma's 3 and 10. At the women's school. So where was the advantage then? Yeah, exactly. Nah, it's just a bunch of crying. It's just what it sounds like. Bunch of crying. I had a point and I forgot it. Must not have been a good one. Yeah, Omaha, sunny, Sunnyvale, California, before it came to Oklahoma City. Oh, I know my point. So, you know, this kind of kind of uh, what I was saying about when we're talking about the um, – the, it feels like, well, I think you were gone that day, and I was talking about with Jeremy when he was helping me out, when um, – it feels like the rest of the college softball world is kind of catching up with OU. At least it kind of felt like this year, kind of the gap is kind of closed. And, and we said it yesterday when the field was set that this thing could be wide open. Anyone has a case to win it. Maybe, and, and you know, and that, and, and I was saying that's credit OU for that, but how dominant they've been, everyone else. And Gajewski kind of said that I, I want to recruit players that are not afraid of OU, that mm -hmm. want to come and beat OU, they're not going to be intimidated by them. And maybe that's kind of a reflective of the rest of the nation. Like we got to get to that level if we want to compete. We got to get to that OU level, and so OU kind of deserves some credit of elevating the sport. Well, maybe we'll start seeing some other cities go. You know what? We need to do what Oklahoma City is doing with their softball. If we want to put a bid in when that contract's up, maybe we need to start something now and build up our facilities. Maybe Atlanta does something like that, or or Omaha, or whatever cities you just mentioned. So, you know, credit Oklahoma City for elevating the sport on an international level and maybe we'll start seeing some more facilities come up where this conversation can be like seriously had of, yeah. well, maybe we can move it around but where are you going to put it that, just, right now it's not even a conversation because no. oklahoma city's facilities are so much farther superior than anything else that's out there that's why yeah i mean the, the only thing you can bring up if you're on the other side of this is where it was 20 years ago thir almost 30 those atlanta olympics are almost 30 years ago 96 and 96 yeah Guess what? Lots of things have happened since 1996, and particularly at Devon Field or whatever it's called. What's crazy is look, because you're seeing, you know, this on this day, what would it be, 24 years ago? Uh, oh, you won that first national title. Oh, I know. Look at look at and what the, it was then. The facilities <laughs> then. It looks like uh, no offense, but it, it looks like uh, like a maybe like UCO's facility or something. Like you know, like a small college facility, it had tents in the outfield. Those stadium bleachers weren't there, mm -hmm. and so how? So where it was then to now? Like they recognized, I think, way back then, we got something here, 
and they've invested so much. They being Oklahoma City, the city of Oklahoma City, and now corporations like Devon Energy getting in there, understanding that this is this sport is growing. It has grown exponentially over the past twenty years since that time, and and it's still growing. It's very popular. Oklahoma yeah. City has taken this thing by the horns, said this is ours, and we're gonna we're gonna invest so much into it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the, that's funny you mentioned that because when you do when you see those. Early, that, that early team in 2000 that won it, that it's not even recognizable. It's not even the same place. No. It might be on the same piece of land, but it's not the same place, and it's not even close. And that, the the allocation of resources that the that Oklahoma City has put into that place throughout all these years is why it ain't leaving. <laughs> not until somebody else does something. There, there's no other viable uh, – if you have that – it's like if you could host a basketball tournament inside the Pioneer Center or on the Thunder Court right beside it. Come on. Yeah. It ain't happening. It just, it's not. I say Thunder Court because I don't know that anybody else has anything as close to Hall of Fame Stadium as, say, the old high school gym. I don't even think it's there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why... That's how far behind everyone has gotten. And nobody cared until 12 years ago when Patty Gasso and the Sooners decided, you know what, we're going to start nominating. We're going to win half of them. And now that's why everybody cares is because it's not because of where it is. Nobody's griping about the facilities not being good enough. That that, that ain't happening. It's simply Oklahoma's been good and everybody's tired of getting their butts kicked by them. So do something about it. You know, this conversation won't happen if you go win. Texas, they're the number one seed. Go win the thing. And I would like to think, if you were if you were them, wouldn't it be even that much sweeter to shut up all those Crimson and Cream fans at their home away from In home? There, yeah. I think that'd be pretty sweet. I can promise you, the folks wearing orange and black would love nothing better than that. See, they're not griping. Of course, they can't, since they're in... Also in Oklahoma. If I was Kenny Guy Asky, I would use that as bulletin board material. 100%. Look at this. They're so worried about them, they're not even thinking about us. <laughs> yeah. We're in the same damn state, too. Yeah. Ridiculous. I'm not hearing the cries from the blue bloods of college softball. UCLA. You know, Arizona. I know Arizona's not here, but you're mm-hmm. not hearing it from over there. You're hearing it from the rivals. Oh, yeah. And the novice fan that suddenly is paying attention, and they think that this is a new thing. It's been here for... Since 1990. Yeah. Outside of one year. Outside of one year. Yeah. When it went down to just... It's just a, laughable. And it's laughable that they actually... And it's clickbait. It's all that article was. It worked for me. It's clickbait to get... Uh, to, to waste 24 minutes of our show yeah, on it. Yeah, well, it's, what it I just, it, it's so <laughs> funny to me that... You have, literally there are there are two teams, two schools that have been in that College World Series now for four straight years, making their fourth straight appearance, both of them. And Oklahoma State's not even mentioned, so I guess it's not it's it, even though it's in Oklahoma, it is not an advantage for the Cowgirls. Really, Tulsa, you're slacking here. <laughs> Come on, Tulsa, it's in All our right. state here. Come on, uh, Why aren't they uh, dominating the? What are they playing the? Conference USA or American AAC American Athletic Conference. (laughs) Anyhow, so yeah, that did that wasted a whole segment of our show. (laughs) Hanging out here on a Wednesday. Appreciate our friends up uh, over at uh, Rother Brothers, Highway 183, just north of Clinton. Rother Brothers is the family-owned dealership started by its three owners in Kingfisher back in 1976. Remains a family-owned and operated dealership to this day. Expanded now to three locations covering all of western Oklahoma in Clinton, Fairview, and Kingfisher. Rother Brothers prides itself creating a one-stop shop for all sorts of equipment, parts, repair, services for many makes and models. Case IH, Polaris, Bad Boy Mower, Shadow, Woods Equipment. I mean, they've got everything. Rother Brothers, 580-323-1981. Rother Brothers located North of Clinton, just barely north of Clinton. Would you, would you call it north, or like right in between Clinton and Arapaho? Yeah, like four miles between the towns. Yeah, so it's, yeah and it's, it's about right in the middle. There. Yeah. Between Clinton and Arapaho and Highway 183. 
All right. What do you want to talk about next? We got a lot to talk about. We you could want to talk, talk about, about the about. playoff games. You want to talk about Presty and what the Thunder might do? Well, I, I, since the playoff games are still happening, let's talk about what Presty said. Okay. You know what I mean? We could talk about the playoff games when they're. You know. All right. So if you can tell me what he said, <laughs> then we can talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to honestly say I did not sit through the two hours <laughs> to hear what he said because I knew he wasn't going to say anything, you know? He was going to wrap up this season. He did make a comment, I believe, of he feels like, and I think you feel this way too, that the window is, is we're just beginning here with the, the opportunities to win big and, and possibly bring in a championship. Um, so, you know, you could take that for whatever it's worth on how he moves forward. Uh, or he could be telling us, we're just beginning. Why make drastic moves? Why make big changes? A lot to unravel there. It's like an onion. So, but it was a classic Sam Presti long inter- or uh, exit interview. What'd you take from it? Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on what you want to happen. If you're hell bent on Josh Giddy being out of here, I think you twist his words into, well, he's not doing anything. When I, when I specifically ask about him and just talked about, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, it's, you know, it, it's one of those weird things. The, the NBA, you know, everybody wants to point to Dallas, especially around here, that them making a couple of moves to the trade deadline has completely changed their team. And maybe from a defensive mindset, that's true. But at the end of the day, it, it, if if PJ Walker or PJ Walker, PJ Washington, and Daniel Gafford coming in changed the the defensive mindset for Luca and and Kyrie, then then I guess you can give that that move like all this credit. At the end of the day, though. Luca and Kyrie are awesome. You know what I mean? I mean that's they are fit. To, that, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot. Yeah, PJ Washington had he had a couple of great games against the Thunder. He was three of thir- he was three of thirteen last night, two of nine from three. You know, Gafford six for six. Well, if I was that tall, I could dunk it too. I mean, that's all he does. <laughs> it, the, everything everything that's ha- that happens for those two guys is created by two people, Kyrie and Luca. They create everything. And so, as much as maybe the defensive mindset did change with him in there because he blocked shots and that kind of thing, the truth of it is Kyrie and, and, and Luca have found kind of the key to lo- unlock each other's success as much as anything else that's happening in Dallas. So, I mean, it's it's easy to point to that as a, as a, a break-off time of, okay, they weren't very good before, now they turned good and it had everything to do with that. It had something to do with that, but it also all the all the all that mindset changing doesn't happen if Kyrie and, and Luca don't decide to do it. And so it, it's it, it's easy to to just think changing something will automatically go good. We saw right here in Oklahoma City, just because you make a change doesn't mean it works with with the Gordon Hayward thing. I mean, if you looked when that when those moves happened, and they both came off the same team. Now Hayward hadn't played because he'd been hurt, but it, when they were playing together, Hayward and Washington before Gordon got hurt, Hayward was outperforming PJ Washington leaps and bounds. PJ Washington shot twenty four percent on corner threes this season on one hundred and sixteen attempts. For reference, Thunder fans, Andre Robertson for his career shot twenty eight percent. So he was 4% worse than Andre Robertson, who nobody thinks can shoot. But he's found himself a nice little niche here in Dallas. Now, not last night on two of nine, but he has made a difference in some playoff games. There's no doubt about that. But there's, I don't think outside of the injury, no one thought Gordon Hayward was washed up like it turned out he was at the time. Now, it's easy to say it now. But at the time, now there was the one thing was, ooh, he's coming off the injury, which turned out to be true. But Presti, I thought, did a good job of owning up to that mistake 
admitting it was a mistake. You know, Hayward's wife was on Twitter talking about how they didn't try to integrate him and play him enough. I think everyone that paid any attention to the Thunder thought they played him too much once it became apparent that he couldn't he couldn't do it. It's not Presti's job to look at the rim. Not only did he not take shots, he never even looked at the rim. Now, it's Presti's job to not make that move if you know that's going to happen, but I, I, I don't think anybody saw that coming to the level of awfulness that it turned out to be. So the, the grass isn't always greener, and that's Presti's job, though, to, to decide Gordon Hayward is a better fit than P.J. Washington or, or vice versa when you make those trade deadline moves. And now going forward, it's going to be really – if they make some giant move to get rid of a ton of picks – at that point, it's going to be really important to make the right choice because of money. If you still have a bunch of picks, you know, if you hit on one of every four of these first rounders that are all going to be what it looks like going to be down, you know, late lottery or worse, if you hit on one of every four of those in this little period, they got what, 13? So that means you end up with four rotational players. That would be a pretty good hit rate to contribute to a team that's going to be this good. And also, it would be pretty important to do that because of the money you're about to start paying to three dudes that you already have on your roster, much less anybody else that's out there. Right. So what do you think? So, again, we we have no idea what he was saying, but do you think, does it change your, after hearing him talk, I mean, we had your, you know, we have opinions on what they should do and what we would want them to do and maybe even a wish list, you know, of, man, it'd be awesome to get this person. Does it change your opinion of, well, he might do this or he might be looking to do this? No. I think it's going to be kind of, I think he's you know, going to be minor, minor things, but nothing that's going to be like stop the presses, breaking news. Well, it, Earth shattering. It totally depends on what's available. I mean, we can all sit here and, and make these great trades in our mind, but the other team has to do it too. Yeah, they that, have that, to do it. They have yeah. to agree to what – I mean, yeah, we can we can all give Josh Giddy and four first-round picks for Lori Markinen. Well, Utah has to agree to that. You know, I saw a fascinating name yesterday in some of this talk that – there's surely no way Houston's ready to give up on Jabari Smith, but man, you want to talk about a type of guy that would sure help? Jabari Smith would be kind of that guy. Long, athletic, you know, almost Chet 2.0, but it'd be nice to have two of them out there. Mm. You know, you brought up Paul George. That's one that's kind of been, I've seen in different articles that doesn't, yeah, it's I, hard to buy into those. I mean, I, I saw that too. You mentioned it yesterday off air, and I was so I googled it. You know, it's like is this a fan ran site? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You just you can't take too much stock into it. It's fascinating. I mean, we'd be re- giving pretty much back a lot of. Uh, I kept hearing, "I want my picks back." Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> from draft day. Yeah, I kept hearing that when uh, uh, that came up. You know, but it would it would it would mean, and in that article, I'll credit them saying this. It would mean Paul George would have to change his approach of where he is in his career of not being the guy. You know, you have to be kind of a, a compliment to SGA, and and he hasn't really fit into that star role. He's a great player, but being that star player on the team, he so. I think that's a pipe dream. The Clay Thompson thing is fascinating. There's been talk of that even before the season was even over, of would he fit in on this team instead of Josh Giddy being posted up left wide open to shoot a three because teams are daring him. They would have to guard Clay Thompson. I know his production has fallen off the last couple of years, but he's still very capable of of getting on a heater and hitting some. That's fascinating, and he could probably get him on the cheap maybe in. And then there's always the Kevin Durant thing that's floating out there. Of have the and that's the thing about Presty, though. You know, he says those things about Giddy, right? And maybe even about Hayward. And, and he's never one to. Comp- he does not burn bridges. He he doesn't. He's such a special guy, in my opinion, because he's he's like, all right, thanks for your time here. Good luck to you. We we wish we could have resigned you. You know, as bitter as the fan base was about the Durant departure, he, 
Presto said all the right things and probably in the back of his mind thinking, I don't want to burn this bridge because maybe one day there will be an opportunity here. And there's always, you know, it's, is it working in Phoenix for Durant? Is he happy there? Does he see what's going on in Oklahoma City? He's very been very complimentary of, of what Oklahoma City is now and his podcast and being guests on other podcasts. Is he sending messages out, the commercial, the infamous commercial with Chet? So there's a lot of possibilities. Those are the kind of the wish list stuff. of It'd be fascinating to see happen. But I don't think anything crazy is going to happen. We're going to see minor changes. And and uh, I think the big thing for me yesterday was him saying that we're just starting. We're just starting. So why yeah, try say? to tear this up or why try to make drastic changes when that window is It's not even closing. It's opening right now. Yeah, the the one thing about the win the window is, but there's if things go the way it looks like they're going to go, how long is that window going to be open? And I say that not because of the thunder, but how long until San Antonio yeah. is sort of unbeatable? How many years? do you have before that occurs with Wimbanyama? Uh, the guy with the huge ticket, he's... he's what was the cash out? 80000 He took eighty grand after the Thunder won what? Game... The, the one game they four. stole. Yeah. Game four, when it tied it to a piece. Coming back to Oklahoma City, he took eighty grand right then. Uh, anyhow... You know, so maybe that does speed up if if Presti thinks that Women Yama is what everyone seems to think he is, then does that speed this up? And all of a sudden, you know, yes, it looks like we're going to be great for a decade. Problem is, we're going to be great at the same time as as Women Yama. So will we be relegated to the role of say Patrick Ewing and John Stockton and and Carl Malone mm. during those Bulls runs and the two separate times? Yeah, and if that's the case, then if he if he truly believes that, and say okay, two more years before Wimbenyama just runs the league, well, then major swings are going to have to be taken in order to try to maximize this window mm -hmm. before Chet and Dub are getting paid big time money. It makes you wonder too, you know, and Presty comes from that San Antonio mold, right? But Makes you wonder if he's looking like, what are they going to do? You know, wh what does San Antonio do? Because what you're saying here is, what do they make some big changes or or big leaps this summer to improve their team? I mean, listen, they could do anything to improve them win total. I think. Oh yeah, <laughs> they were so bad, but you know, to, to help out uh, Wimby and all that. But uh, so what I'm saying is, as Presty kind of hold back and go, listen, you guys want to make drastic changes and drastic moves. Uh, fine, go for it. Well, I think you know it'll, I, it, I think it, it'll show you around the league if you start seeing these major swings at short term contracts. I think it'll tell you that the whole league thinks we have a couple more years before we're done for a decade. You know, barring you know, like yeah. barring injury or something like that. And so, Presteve obviously is in as good a position as anybody. With you know, even though the Gordon Hayward as a player didn't work the trade did open up what 35 million dollars in space this summer to be able to do something uh and if you want to do something major then you can start throwing in some contracts and and getting i mean the the, the thunder anybody that's available even sort of available the thunder have the capability of acquiring with all the ammo they have it's just the truth even in free agency, you think? No, not necessarily, because then they have their own choice. I'm talking about guys okay. that if they're sort of available on the last on year the, or two of their deal. I, I see what you're saying. The Thunder can absolutely absorb any of that money by making trades. I mean, they can do anything with what they have stockpiled. And I think if you see a crazy move like, huh, that's weird, out of Oklahoma City, the reason will be Victor Wimbanyama because Presti has decided we don't have as long as everybody thinks. 
I, I think he was such a force as a as a rookie that you've got to consider, even though they're nowhere near the top of the food chain in the West at this point, they're coming and they're going to be. And he's a completely different guy than anybody else has. And so, I mean, you know, there's been talk of that being a landing spot for Giddy, but who would the Thunder want back that changes their team? You know, maybe for the next couple of years it does, but I, I, I have a feeling, and I've thought this from, from the beginning, if you're one of those people that's going to get upset if Giddy's still on the team after the draft, you probably ought to start getting upset. I think the way more likely version of this is Giddy is gone at the deadline. At next year. Yeah, at next year's trade yeah. deadline. Just because I, I do believe that they'll, you know, whether it's, uh, oh gosh, I saw some names, uh, like, you know, people, Valanchunas, or Nick Claxton, that type of big guy. I think Presti's at least going to give it a chance just, get, just to see before. And, and maybe not. Maybe he's got somebody else in mind, a bigger fish that's out there that it will take Josh Giddy to be able to get. That's always possible. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that Giddy possesses that some of the other guys don't is length and to be able to rebound the ball or the idea that he can rebound the ball. You no know, offense to Casey Wallace or Dort, you know, some of those guys, but Giddy's just bigger than them. And that's one thing that was probably, you know, the, the most disappointing of Giddy's series against Dallas was grabbing two or three or four rebounds a night instead of getting up there to seven or eight, which could have been the difference in the whole thing. 100% could have. So, um, and these are just questions we don't have to answer them, but the free, agent th free agency fascinates me this year because – you know, there's always the knock on Oklahoma City. It's not a big market. It's not a, I don't know, party place, whatever. It's not a destination city for free agents. But does that change? And, I, you know, we even saw this when the, during the Durant era that it was still hard to acquire yeah. top-name free agents because of stuff I just mentioned. Does that perception change now? Like, oh, well, this is a team that's set up to win – the next few years is this where I want to be as a free agent? So something to look for there in free agency, which is what July six, something like that. Yeah, I have the dates. Yes, July six. But I think what we really need to start discussing, and we'll probably do that as soon as the finals are done, is what the Thunder do in the draft with that twelfth pick. You know, there's a lot of interesting names kind of being floating around. Edie, was oh. that <laughs> right? Um, Williams out of Colorado, are there so, or, or do they trade it? Do they even need it? I, I, there's a so that's a, all. Those are dates we just need to look forward to this summer. I mean, there's a big part of me that hopes they don't even take a pick, because yeah. that means that they've done something to help them more immediate. But you say that, and then you know you looked up at, in that series against Dallas, and he didn't shoot the ball very well in the very very last game, but. You know, as the twelfth pick last year, Casey Wallace was way better than anybody thought he was going to be. Yeah, even yeah. as a rookie for this team, for a team that was as, as good as the Thunder were. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's just starting. Yeah. So you know, when when he was drafted, the whole talk was, well, he'll just be a he'll be on the G League team all year. And never mind, he's playing big minutes in playoff series. Yeah. You know, there's another guy. There, there's a guy that's already there. That. If he turns out to be what you'd hoped he would be or what Presti hoped he would be, a lot of these questions just go away. And it's Usman Jang. If Usman Jang could turn into a viable NBA player, that solves a ton of these issues because you've got a guy that is athletic, that is what, six foot 11, that is able to shoot the basketball or in theory can shoot threes. I mean, we've seen him up and down, no doubt about it throughout. His, but has he really had a chance to be an NBA player yet? Or has it been more, actually, he's just six foot nine, but still, you know, that's the type of guy we're talking about, or a guy maybe just a little bit bigger than that. You know, he, he helps out tons if he can, if he can be a really good player or a, heck, just a viable NBA player. He's only 21. 
and you know they had the they had the luxury of being able to draft him where they drafted him because the very next pick was J Dub, who was twenty two when he got here. You know that's the thing. You, you, we've seen him enough. You kind of forget how young these guys are. Josh Giddy is twenty one years old. It doesn't seem like it because we've seen him for three years now, right? But he <laughs> he is that young. And. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he fits because he can't shoot the way you want him to, and 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 maybe a lot of teams. He's he is the guy though, of of the ones you don't want that you don't mind getting rid of. I think he clearly has the most value outside of the Thunder, because any time you got to see him do what really the Thunder drafted him to do, and then J Dub kind of took his spot. When you seem to do that, you're going. It's Josh Giddey's pretty good player. He just probably isn't going to be able to be that good of uh, as good of a player as he could be on the Thunder, and that's where you hope somebody else loved him in the draft and is going, "Yeah, we can do that. That makes tons of sense for us." Now, what do you want? Ooh, just then. Then the next question is, okay, how good can Giddy be for us, and what else can you give us? There will be that opportunity out there for something. Now, whether or not it's in Presti's mind, good enough to take, we'll never know until it happens, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing. We will not ever know until, oh my gosh, Giddy's out of here, whenever that might be. I just have a feeling it's not going to be soon enough for a lot of people that don't want him here at all next year. I still think, I still think you see him there until the trade deadline and yeah. then – you know, well, maybe even the Thunder give him more of a chance to showcase his skills like he did the first year before J Dub kind of took over the ball handling. See, hey. we, we didn't go two and a half hours, but we went about 20 minutes without saying nothing. Are you crying? Are you crying? The skinny on sports. There's no crying in baseball. That is a perfect segue to use, perfect return to use, because our next topic is going to be baseball. Welcome back, Skinny on Sports. It was the Tom Hanks, are you crying? There's no crying. crying? There's no crying in baseball. There's not going to be crying uh, for uh, a certain local player. No, you know where else you're not going to be crying at? Oh, I can think of a lot of places. The Boomtown Grill? Oh, that'd be, yeah, well, of course. The only reason you'd cry is because you just filled yourself full of delicious food. Or appetizers. Tears of joy, maybe. Or maybe cold ones. (laughs) There you go. What a perfect place to watch Game Four of the Western Conference Finals in the NHL tonight, Edmonton and Dallas. But the Boomtown Grill, they've got it all. They've got steaks, they've got chicken, they've got some seafood, they've got pizza, pasta. Tomorrow, Thursday special is those fifty cent boneless wings. Yesterday was the five dollar chicken fry. Twelve big screen TVs, happy hour two to six Monday through Friday. Appetizer plates. I'm telling you, those chicken nachos are absolutely delicious. It's the Boomtown Grill, 2103 South Main in Elk City. Boomtown is open seven days a week, 11 to 10 on Sunday through Thursday, and then 11 to 11 on Fridays and Saturdays. All right, Jared, go ahead. I had to run down the hall. i got to catch my breath. Yeah, uh, now the latest mock draft is out. The latest uh, Major League Baseball mock draft is out. i got to pull it out Courtesy here. of? Uh, ESPN. Um, it's right there on their front page, and... Uh, you'll find right at n- number 25, San Diego Padres, they have Cash Mayfield. Of course, Oak City lefty, uh, prep pitcher. Fantastic career just wrapped up a few weeks ago, and looks like the next uh, the next venture for him is going to be the opportunity. the opportunity to play pro ball. So that's cool. And his name is also mentioned with the Dodgers. Had, who have the 23 pick. I mean, his name was actually mentioned. Said uh, Mayfield could land here or is tied here with someone else. But uh, 25 right here. Of course, me, I'd like to see him go. I I don't want to wish that he drops to 30 for the Texas Rangers, but that'd be really cool to see him wear the T on his hat and play down in Arlington one day. But it would be cool, too, to find him at – and I mentioned the Dodgers because of, of course, the affiliation with – what it's called the Oklahoma City Baseball Club, whatever they're going to call it, in Oklahoma City. And who knows? You could see him uh, throw at the brick a few times uh, on his way up or 
hopefully you don't. Hopefully you just get called straight up. But it's really exciting, really exciting for a local product, uh, his name being mentioned right here on the front page of ESPN. Yeah, you got uh, the last MLB.com mock draft was about two weeks ago. And you mentioned you're talking about the Dod being mentioned as the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. This one has him being picked by the Dodgers cool. at 23. But it also says, and this is something we kind of heard through the grapevine of different stuff, knowing some different folks that sources are involved somehow in some way. Um, that it, it says under you know his little blurb underneath. Some clubs rank Mayfield ahead of, Kim, of Cam Caminiti, which you find in the top 15 in about every one of these. Uh, because he spins the ball better and has a more fluid delivery, which means he gets mentioned as high as 13 to 15. So one major difference between those two is Caminiti 17 and Cash is 19. I'm sure that matters to mm. to the the folks. But it, it may matter in different ways, right? This isn't the NBA where younger the better no matter what. You know, some, some clubs may have a, a different need at a different timeline than others which would mean they'd rather have the 19-year-old than the 17-year-old because maybe when, they need, when they're really going to need somebody in two or three years, he'll be more prepared mm-hmm. to, to be there than, say, the, the younger guy. Now, it's, you know, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I can't even remember who it was with. But you know, we mentioned Quaid yesterday, Quaid Cummins. He is going to have a PGA Tour card more than – I mean, he's, he's in like the 95% chance right now with the way he's performed on the Corn Ferry Tour so far, that he's going to have a PGA Tour card next year. Then you think about Ryder. Cowan grew up out here playing at OU on the golf team as a true freshman. His, I mean, he is kind of on that same track as, as what Quaid is you know, kind of hopefully coming to the end of as far as getting to the Tour. And then now this, with Cash, uh, pretty realistic chance that he'll be a first-round pick. Man, for this small little area of western oklahoma yeah the last five or six seven years man that i can't i can't remember that high level of of athletes coming through here like that that's a a really cool time it is it is really cool we hope it continues absolutely and there's you know there's people i'm sure we're not even mentioning but yeah it's pretty cool uh it's i can't wait to see exactly where it all shakes out yeah because you never know. It it just takes one team to really like him for these mock drafts to be about 10 picks off. Yeah. And, and I think that's what this one is trying to say on MLB.com is we've got him 23, 23 to the Dodgers, but don't be shocked if he's up in that 13 to 15 range. Uh, July 14th. Yeah, July 14th. 14, 15, 16, but we expect to hear his name. Yeah, July 14th is probably be the day that – yeah, it'll be in Fort Worth. Most of them don't go though. Most of them, it's usually it's done kind of over a phone the phone call. thing. Yeah, do they typically go where the All Star Game is going to be? Is that where the drafts usually are? Probably so make, it, it probably makes sense. I know, I know, Fort Worth is not Arlington, but Texas Rangers hosting the, you know, Metroplex is hosting the All Star Game. I think that's kind of same time frame. That's why they do it there. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. You know, it used to be centered around the uh college world series for years and years right you know you that it would happen kind of while that was going on or as it was getting started so now it's you know another month back or what have you uh from that time probably makes that i mean for the for the players i'm sure especially the i mean the college kids obviously that are draft eligible it probably takes a little bit of load off of them not to have all those things happening at the exact same time Mm mm-hmm yeah. At the same time for for our purposes it'd be nice if it was 2 weeks from now. I'm sure that I'm sure that some other in other ways I'm sure kids are like I wish it was still in June. That way you'd know. And not have a whole extra month of waiting of waiting and and, and trying to find out exactly what's going to happen there. What's wrong with your your uh, your Rangers are hurt. I knew they would coming into the season with the pitching. Just kind of holding on, hoping the pitching gets healthy. Looks like Evan Carter's going to DL. Yeah. 26 and 29. Yeah, they've kind of fallen a little bit. Good news. Just, just stay around there, you know, top of the division, and then so maybe get Scherzer back and, God willing, DeGrom and everyone else back healthy. The rotation should be fine. But got to stay up there. You got to get some wins. 
Yeah, good news is they're not being run away from. No, no. Bad news is <clears throat> there's a couple of teams that I think are way better than anybody thought they would be. One of them is 100% Kansas City. The Royals 34 and 22, that's 12 over. Nobody saw that. No, nah, that's awesome. A little bit, little bit Orioles of last year. Yeah, feel to them. Maybe. So now, whether or not they can hold on, we'll see, or if it's just a really good start. I got a buddy. He lives up in um, Nevada, 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 Missouri. Not Nevada, Nevada, and Missouri. Mm-hmm. Big Royals fan. We've attended some Royals games together when they played the Rangers at both Kaufman in uh, Arlington. And uh, I've kind of sent him some message. He goes, nah. He's like the guy in the yeah, – Wait a he's minute. like, ah, oh, well, they'll blow it in the playoffs. You know, he just kind of He really, fits right into the yeah. major league guys. Yeah. It's like, back the truck uh-huh. up. Yeah. <laughs> you might be right. Kansas City's lost their last three. Do you think our in-house uh, Royals fan has any idea? Not too bad. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> He, no. He, he probably thinks it's Tuesday. <laughs> he doesn't have any idea the Royals are playing baseball. <laughs> he only knew that was a couple of years. <laughs> right. He was the big fan then. <laughs> He'll forget the Chiefs play as soon as Patrick Mahomes is done. Yep. <laughs> uh, one team that's in that a lot of people thought were the favorites to win the World Series that are not now, that's the Braves. Man, Spencer Strider and Ronald Acuna. Yes. It's the way it goes sometimes, that's not, right? That's baseball, man. That's baseball. It is, but that's yeah, it's a bummer. Absolutely crushing for them. Um, as far as their hopes to win the title this year, I think you can pretty well go ahead and eliminate them from that race. And now it looks like maybe Phillies, Dodgers, and the NF, and in the uh, Philly NL. looks really good. Of course, we knew Dodgers were going to be good. You know, Houston started slow. They've kind of clawed their way back. And then there's my Brewers. How are they looking? They're early in the division by three and a half games over Phil or over Will's Cubs. I told Will he was giving on, getting on to me about being a Brewers fan, and I was like, "Yeah, it, I'll be honest with you, it didn't really stick the way I was hoping it would." <laughs> and so I have I have made an executive decision about my Major League Baseball fandom. Are you serious? What I have, and it's very very simple. And we just talked about it a second ago. Wherever cash goes. Wherever cash goes is going to be. <laughs> I was that's about e- to ask. That's exactly you gonna what it's going to be. Are going to buy a Padres cap <laughs> yeah, or, or a Dodgers I, cap? That's. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. Wouldn't wherever, be hard. Just go to the city. Go, just whip down in the Bricktown ballpark. I'm sure they have some Dodgers caps. Wherever cash goes is going to be my new team. <laughs> uh, I, I had that question on the tip of my tongue, and I didn't mm-hmm. ask it. Boy, I hope it's not the Miami Marlins or the White Sox. Why not? They're terrible. I don't want to root for a terrible team, but maybe it'll be the same. Where's Detroit? And eh, Detroit's right around 500. They were one that kind of got a bunch of young pitching. May not be quite ready. Nah, your Rangers are fine. They're just hurt a little bit. Seattle's not running away with for I me. I said it going in. They're you know, be, it's weird, though, yeah. because that division was so good last year. They don't have anybody with a positive run differential yeah. right now. Yeah. The Yankees well, are good, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, the Yankees good. are good. And getting Soto helped them. Yeah, Juan Soto is a good player. Yeah. Very good. Juan Soto is a good player. You know what's fun to look at in baseball? Not the City Connect uniforms. I hate them all. No. But no, what's that? Old Tony Gwynn stats. Yeah. Like as far as how he didn't strike out. Yeah. I saw one yesterday that... The, the brave staffs of the 90s only struck him out three times. Wow. I mean, that's, it's just unbelievable, some of the stuff awesome. that you can go back and see. All right, everybody have a great Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk about game four of the NHL playoffs. Skinny on Sports on the Sports Animal. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening.